Gentlemen, welcome everyone. I hope you are all keeping well, healthy and happy. Let's see here. Uh, let's begin with the seventh unit. Uh, as you all know, we have just finished the sixth unit and there's going to be a test sooner or later. Uh, I will see whether it will be uh, after two weeks when we finish with online lessons. But if they are going to extend it, then it will be online somehow. Anyway, uh, if you check the unit map over here, they will see you will see here that we are going to discuss vocabulary word skills uh, and in vocabulary we have numbers and currencies uh, shops and services shopping verbs to do with money and business and in school then in word skills we are going to learn the difference between using the verbs in infinitive and ing and later on in grammar you will discuss uh, conditionals with me and past perfect two very difficult things in my opinion uh, but I will try to make it easy for you in my videos. And uh, later on also they'll be listening and other word skills. Let's begin here with 7a. Uh, here I just want to guide you through this very quickly and explain a few things. And I will give you some homework to do after this. Now, uh, here at the very beginning, they say is something worth it, right? Worth doing something. If you use the verb worth, then you have worth and ing. If I say, for example, is it worth going to Prague, right? And I would say, yes, it is. There are many interesting things to do, for example. All right. So if, if, it's, if you say something is worth doing something, that means it's a good idea to spend time doing this. All right. For example, it is not worth uh, playing computer games all day. You are not going to learn much, all right? You cannot make money from it. You're not going to learn anything useful in your life for this. Now, uh, from this, you can also make uh, an adjective. You could say something is worthless. That means there's no value, all right? If uh, you have something that you cannot sell, something that has no price, in a negative way, so that uh, nobody is going to use it, nobody is going to buy it, then it is worthless, right? And the opposite would be priceless. No value, right? Uh, this is a good and this one is bad. So if it's no value, priceless, for example, priceless uh, painting. For example, Mona Lisa, right? Mona Lisa is priceless. And then we have worthless, worthless drawing. This would be my drawing, all right? If I draw something myself, it's worthless. I'm not a good artist, and this is why my drawing would be worthless. All right, let's uh, let's try it here this time. So the question is, is it worth it? All right. So you see, there are a lot of products here, all right, over here too. And the question is, is it worth buying these products? So we are going to discuss price here. Um, before we begin. I want to also tell you three things that you can buy. There are only three things, or yeah, four, uh, four things you can buy in the world. You cannot buy anything else, only four things. First thing you can buy is product, all right? Something that people make. Then you can buy produce, something that people grow, all right? Or take from animals, for example, milk, all right? Oranges and so on so i can take produce and i can make a product for example i take milk and i will make uh, dairy products like yogurt or i can make uh what else can i make for milk let's say i can make uh, i can make cheese all right so this would be product Th that's the idea and afterwards you can buy service all right, service. Then we have uh, for service, for example, a haircut. You can get a haircut at the, at the barber or uh, education. All right, you can buy yourself some lesson and that's it. And the last one you can buy, the last things are natural resources. All right, we are talking about oil, coal, things that are in the nature, right, and wood. Those are things that nobody has made, right? Uh, the nature has made them over a long time 
and uh, they are considered natural resources. Those are the only four things you can buy in the world. Okay, so not, nothing else here. Um, all right, all right. So uh, I'm thinking there are more words, but it's okay. You don't need more now. So let's have a look here. Let's have a look at these produ produce products, all right, or even services. So in the first one, uh, before you start listening here, you need to decide which one you think would be the most expensive and which one is the least expensive, in your opinion, all right? Think about it because it will help you in the listening later. When we look here, there are a few things we should learn. First thing, this, these are the currencies, and as you know, uh, countries tend to have different currencies. There are two major differences uh, between uh, English and Czech in here. The first one is that the currency is written in the front okay, of the number. There are a few exceptions, for example, rupees in India, all right? But generally, most of, uh, most of the currencies are written in front. And this is also true even if you want to write it in the code. For example, $500, all right? So I can make... Uh, I can make a character like this, and I would say $500, or you can also uh, do it this way. You can also write USD 400, all right? Now, this is a big difference uh, if, you compare it, uh, if you compare it with Czech, because uh, the currency is in the front, all right? In the Czech language, we write it later, all right? So that's a big, big problem here. The second issue is that in uh, the Czech language, if I want to differentiate uh, each three digits, I would just say, okay, this is 1,300, all right? 1,300, and then uh, point, you know, I don't know, 45, okay? So in Czech, this would be 1,345, okay? Now, in English, it's the direct opposite. If you want to write the same number, the comma and... Uh, the comma and the, 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 the dot over there must uh, swap their places. So in English, all right, this would be 1300.45. And now this can be really deceiving because, of course, in English, uh, this is the direct opposite. So please remember that. Now, this one we don't read. You don't even have to write it, just like even in, in, uh, in Czech, you don't have to write it, but it's much easier to read bigger numbers this way. But this one we read as point, all right? So 1300.45, point 45. This is how we would read that. If you want to do have zero, 0, 0.45, for example. Okay, uh, okay, okay. So we are we are basically getting there. Another thing uh, when it comes to currencies is that currencies have lowercase a letter in the front. So euro is with lowercase e, rupees with lowercase r, yen with lowercase uh, y, and so on. Uh, then another big problem in English we have one million. Those are six zeros, right? So. 1 million, okay, in uh, in English. And here's the thing, if I want to say 2, then I don't say 2 millions, all right? This would be incorrect. This is not okay, this one. So if you want to say uh, how many of million or billion, you cannot say uh, S at the end, all right? But at the same time, if you want to tell me this will cost millions, then it's okay. Then you can use S, all right? But if you give me number over there, it will cost uh, 6 million, then you cannot say S there. So let me repeat. Millions, billions and trillions and so on. Millions, trillions and uh, billions, they can have S at the end unless they have a number in the front. So then you would say 2 million, 5 billion, and so on, okay? And another thing is that, guys, be careful, because in Czech we say 1 million are 6 zeros, then we have milliarda, right? But they, in English, they don't use it this way. 
billion is miliarda. So that means billion has nine zeros, all right? Nine zeros. And trillions have 12 zeros. So in English, gentlemen, uh, it's a very different system because we have million, milliarda, billion, billiarda, um, trillion, trillionarda, right? But in English, we have millions, billions, trillions. And because they use uh, they use currencies that are much stronger than ours, they will not say you know quadrillions very often because simply the the amount is too high. And the inflation isn't there yet. So if you want to continue, you could say quadrillion. All right. But uh, there isn't enough money in the world yet to actually count in quadrillion. But this is this is how we would continue. All right. So again, quadrillions would be OK. But if you tell me a number, how many, then five quadrillion. All right. All right. That's it. That's it. So uh, but gentlemen, you don't need that. Yeah, just you can remember millions, billions, trillions. That's it. So remember the number of uh, zeros. Remember that the point and dash are the other way around in English. And remember that uh, the symbol of currency or the code of the currency is 99% written in the front. Right? There are a few exceptions like rupee. This one, unfortunately, we must remember. Okay. Uh, so this is this exercise over here gentlemen I want you to listen all right uh, to this I will leave it in Google classroom uh, listen to the to the audio file and then figure out which one what is the price for each item here all right how much is the orchid how much is the white truffles how much is a pan and so on uh, here are the possible prices for this later on when you work uh, you cannot work in pairs but what I want to do what I want to ask you where can you buy these things all right if you want to buy an orchid if you want to buy truffles if you want to buy a pen what kind of shop would you go to all right so put the correct shop into the correct place in here and uh, think about the other items you can also buy there all right if you don't know, then you can always play the second listening here. This will help. All right. Now let me go through the let me go through the shops here. Now bakers, the, what do you think you can buy there? Right. It's about baking, for example, baking bread. Bank is for money. Butcher, butchers. Don't forget the uh, the pronunciation. We don't say butchers, but butchers. All right. I know that this can be deceiving but that's English. Now, charity shop, chemists. Uh, chemists is a very British expression. There is also the word pharmacy, all right? Pharmacy is in American English. I myself usually say pharmacy. Then we have coffee shop, or you can also call it a cafe. All right, like this. And be careful for pronunciation, it's the cafe. All right, and this is coffee, coffee shop. Now, coffee is what you drink, of course. You cannot drink cafe. Cafe is just a place. Then we have clothes shop, easy. A cosmetic store, I think, easy. Deli or delicatessen. This is from French. So, obviously, uh, some kind of expensive products, usually some exotic expensive products from a different country are there. Uh, something to eat, of course. Now, DIY store. DIY, maybe you don't know. Uh, it means do it yourself. Now, if you do it yourself, then it's a kind of a store for usually for guys because guys are interested in that. And you can buy a lot of things that you can build at home. All right. Uh, some woodwork or uh, tools, you know, for, for your garden or for your house. And uh with a lot of things from DIY store, you can build whatever you want, all right? Uh, you can buy everything for your house there. Now, estate agents, this is where you go to buy houses, all right? Estate means uh, property. This is one of the things you can buy. Let me add it here too. So actually, there are five things. Real estate, all right? Real estate are houses or garages or apartments. Then we have florists. This is where you go buy flowers. Garden center. Those are 
play it's kind of like what well, if you know obi guys in obi there's a part where you can buy a lot of things for your garden so that's basically it all right florist is just for flowers garden center is for your garden green grocers is for the vegetables hairdresser is where you get a haircut jewelers jewelry here are the necklace or the earrings right the ring this is where you can buy it. Laundrette, then this is interesting. This is a place where maybe you know the word laundry, right? Now, Laundrette is a, is a shop where you buy, uh, basically where you rent the washing machine and you wash your clothes yourself, right? That's important. Because if uh, somebody else washes them for you, it's uh, more expensive and it's usually for suits. And this is what we call the dry cleaners. It's not here. All right it's another shop this is where you go with your suits and they will clean the suits for you dry cleaners now news agents this is where you buy the newspaper opticians you can buy glasses or contact lenses and a post office you can send a letter shoe shop of course easy stationers you can buy things for your school you know uh, rulers or pencils these kind of things takeaway you can uh, it's kind of a restaurant that will give the food they will sell the meals to people and they will take it away that's why we call it takeaway all right usually in our country those are some chinese restaurants that do take away okay so do this gentlemen all right look at the pictures when you listen put the correct uh, put the correct price in here and then later on just uh, think about in which shop you can buy these things okay now in the next uh, on the next page you will find uh, you will find this listening here listen and repeat all of the shops and services words from exercise four i want you to just practice uh the the pronunciation but personally i cannot check that so if you don't do it i mean uh it's your choice right but i suggest uh, you should try pronouncing those words correctly it's very important then i want you to listen to 2.33 listen to six dialogues match them with six of the shops and services from exercise four so there are dialogues in some kinds of shop number one is diy store so put the correct store in each place in here all right depending on the dialogue then number seven Complete definitions one to nine with the words and phrases below. So we have shopping, bargain. Uh, okay, so let's just go through the words. Now, when something is a bargain, you can get something very cheap. You will say, oh, that's a bargain, all right? And if something is a bargain, you believe that you got this, uh, you got this thing very cheap and for, for a good price, let's say. Now, you can also bargain with someone. It can also be a verb. And when you bargain with someone, you discuss the price and you want to put down the price. All right. Now, coupons, um, just like the discount codes, right? Uh, it's a piece of paper that you can get and you can get a discount. You can get a lower price for the things you want to buy. Now we have a price tag. Uh, you can check it. You can check a label. We can also call it a label, price label, and you can see how much something costs. Receipt. Be careful. There is no P. All right. We say receipt. Now receipt is a piece of paper you get after you buy something, and it's a proof that uh, you have bought it in that store. So if you want to uh, claim warranty and you want to come back later that uh, the thing is not working you need to show them the receipt and they will know that you have really bought it now refund is the money you get back uh, if uh, you are unhappy with the product all right then sale those those uh, mean a lot of discounts for example we uh, uh, something is on sale uh, a lot of uh, t-shirts are on sale today uh, that means every single t-shirt has a discount Sale means a lot of discounts and special offer is just uh, some kind of discount only for you right now. It's usually a way of selling things. So have a look at these guys here, one to nine, put the correct words to the correct place. Uh, all right. Now, over here, listen again, which words from exercise seven do you hear in each dialogue? Uh, guys, you don't have to do this. Number eight is, is okay. All right now present perfect with ever we use present perfect with ever to ask about experiences have you ever bought a pair of really expensive trainers 
Yes, I have. No, I haven't. Uh, just this is something you should already know. I think here we don't have to stay for long. But th this is something I want you to write here. Are you a crafty customer? If you are crafty, uh, the pronunciation is crafty, and the meaning would be ulisni or uh, vinalezavi or lstivi. Okay. But if you're a crafty customer, that means you are able to buy a lot of things very cheap. Now let's see this exercise here. You need to create a question out of this that will uh, ask you if you have ever done it, all right? So have you, and then you say, have you ever, and then you continue, all right? Use it for all the questions here, one, two, three, four, five. And then guys, you should ask your friend, but uh, you can't in here. So what I want you to do, you will write it down. Have you ever, and then you finish the questions and then write down the answers to these questions somewhere all right you can write them here if you want you can write it separately on a piece of paper but write them somewhere and upload it into the task all right so basically uh, you will find uh, the audio files will be on google classroom so without them you are not able to really answer the questions all right so please listen to it and answer ev everything in here all right so everything, all the exercises, but don't do exercise eight. You don't have to do eight. And in exercise nine, you complete the questions and then you write the answers. You cannot really tell me the answers. So let's just write the answers. All right. Don't forget to mention the, the, the exact situation when it happened. So if I say, have you ever asked for a discount in a shop? Then you say, yes, I have. It happened when I was, and then you continue in normal, past, simple. Okay, so if there are any questions, you can ask me. Uh, I will leave all the feedback. Um, I will leave it for Friday night, all right? So I will, I will need to wait for your homework before I tell you the answers. So thank you so much, guys, for your attention, and see you later.